So ceramic capacitors killing your electronics, what on earth am I talking about? Well, I thought this was quite an interesting topic because it's something that uh, new engineers may not have even considered, but a situation that occurred at work recently on a project that I was working on had a situation where there was a ceramic capacitor on the input circuitry to the electronics, there was a switch mode power supply and then the rest of the device. And when we plugged in the power to the device under certain situations, that DC to DC converter no longer worked from that point onwards. So I thought I'd demonstrate what was going on here. So I've got a little, um, I think this is a 22 microfarad um, ceramic capacitor and I've got my bench power supply set up. So uh, I've got the other lead here and I think this is set to around 12 volts or something. Yeah, 12 volts. And all we're going to do is measure the voltage across the ceramic capacitor as we connect up the power. So here we go. And if you have a look at the oscilloscope, you can see actually we've got a massive overshoot. Uh, our nominal voltage here at 12 volts, uh, but the scope is saying that the maximum here is actually 20 volts. And the situation that I saw, um, it was actually a lot higher than that, and it was causing the, um, the input to the DC to DC converter to no longer work because it was seeing such a high transient. And we can demonstrate this with a smaller capacitor as well. So it's not just limited to uh, something like one of these 22 microfarad capacitors. Uh, this one is a 22 nanofarad capacitor. And if we hook up the scope again to this and connect up the power, bam, there we go again. So this time we're reading a slightly higher peak voltage, so 22.6, but the duration is much, much shorter here. So what on earth is going on? So all we've got is our 12 volt power supply with our ceramic capacitor at the other end of it with a scope connected across the capacitor. And our education and books should all tell us that uh, the waveform that we should see is this capacitor charging waveform that asymptotes towards 12 volts. So what is giving us the big spike? Well, basically we've got some non-ideal characteristics between the power supply and the ceramic capacitor. So in my case on the bench here, I've got some one meter cables um, so this distance is just one meter, but what we're actually got here is we've got some inductance, we've got some um, resistance, and there would be some parallel uh, capacitance along here distributed all the way along, but that's minimal because we've not got um, wires that are joined together along the whole length. But what's critical is that this inductance here is causing us basically to uh, have a big inductive spike. So what's going on here essentially is that we've got this LC circuit and our ceramic capacitors are extremely low ESR devices, which means that they'll charge very, very quickly. So what happens is we start charging the capacitor and we know our inductors resist a change in current. So what happens is the current slowly ramps up and then the capacitor charges up and the inductor still wants that current to continue flowing. So it does whatever it can do to try and keep that current flowing and what that happens to be is by raising the voltage here as high as it can until all of the uh, energy in the coil collapses. So what we're actually seeing is a, basically an RC tank circuit, which is why we're also seeing a bit of ringing as well. So this is a particular problem in certain applications because, for example, where you've got a plug top power supply, um, if you have this plugged in and then connect up your DC connector, this is all charged up ready at 12 volts, so you're just um, shoving in 12 volts directly to this capacitor which wants to create a really huge current and then we see uh, a big current and then the inductor really wants to keep that high current flowing and you see a really high voltage. In the situation where your power supply is permanently connected um, and you turn on the mains instead, you won't see this because the, um, the voltage on the output of your power supply will slowly increase um, and you won't see such a high current being drawn by your capacitors. So I thought it might be interesting just to see what other capacitors are affected by this. It's typically going to be those with a particularly low ESR. So in this case we've got a Weimar film capacitor. So let's uh, do the test on this one. And yeah, there we go. So we're seeing the same sort of 22.6 peak voltage. Then we've got another type of film capacitor. And there we go, very similar. We've got a lot of ringing on this one. I think this is a particularly low impedance capacitor. And then we've got an electrolytic capacitor, so here we go. There we go, and a very small amount of overshoot here, so only 13.4 dropping down to 12 volts. 
So you might say to yourself, well, I've normally got a load on the output here. We haven't just got a capacitor with nothing there. So what I've done now is I've just connected a resistor across here. So this is a 22 ohm resistor, which should present quite a load. So let's connect up the power supply again. And you can see, look, we're still getting a very similar reading, 19.9 volts at the peak here, settling down to 12 volts. So even with a relatively large load like this, um, it's having virtually no effect on that initial spike, which is just passed straight through to our electronics and our DC to DC and causing the input circuitry to blow up. So to try and combat this, what we actually need to do is to limit the current through the capacitor so that we don't see such a high peak current and thus we don't see such a high peak voltage when the capacitor's charged up. So basically the simplest way that we can do this is by adding some resistance in here as much as we can get away with that without affecting our electronics, uh, but enough to dampen the effect um, of the increased current. Right, so here we are with our capacitor and our resistor combination. The scope is across the capacitor and the resistor. And if we repeat the experiment, there you go. We can see we get uh, basically no overshoot here. It's just gone over by about one volt at this point. And what we'd actually do is have this resistor in series with our capacitor but our load would still be across um, the overall combination of the R and the C. So what we're actually doing here is effectively adding some impedance to our capacitor. So we're increasing the ESR. We've still got our load connected across the combination of the R and the C. So we don't connect our load across the C because that will affect our maximum current that we can draw from our power supply. So I'm just simulating that here. Uh, we've got our resistor across the combination of the two. And if we apply power again, there we go, we get basically no overshoot on the oscilloscope. So essentially we want to get this resistance as low as possible so that our circuit still functions as best as possible because DC to DC converters and that kind of thing want uh, extremely high transient currents. So if we start adding big resistances here, you start uh, getting poor behavior of your DC to DC converter. Um, so what you want to do is get this as low as possible and basically what all we're doing is increasing the ESR of this capacitor by having this series resistance. What may work better for you depending on your application is to have cascaded stages. Um, so you might want a, a CLC type filter or something like that so that you still get uh, a high um, transient current capability for your DC to DC converter but you're just limiting that inrush current. The other thing that you can do is you can design something like a soft start circuit and there's lots of ICs that do this for you. And basically during startup, you've got a resistance in series with all of your electronics and then at a predefined time later, it shorts out that resistor. And then from then onwards, your electronics can draw as much power as it likes. So there we go. Hopefully you found that video useful and particularly if you're designing electronics, if you come across this problem in the future, you might know what to start looking for. But until next time, thanks for watching.